Good day everybody and welcome back to another series. This one is called What Remains of Edith Finch. I have no idea what I'm doing but A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning, with the house. Oh wow. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. a really cool mailbox. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought the mystery would be enough to bring me back. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The woods around the house have always been uncomfortably silent. As if they're about to say something, but never do. Be careful for those strikes. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. Who's that? It's like a dragon snake frog thing. Milton Finch. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me.
crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. Ooh, these creaks, no man. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house after it sank. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. <laughs> My Grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. Oh, shit. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. Mm. Well, I mean, if you grow up I like that. Shrin and Itty. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Barbara was a child star for two years, until America grew out of it. <laughs> Edie 
Katie's father, Odin, built the original house. Yes, I love this sort of aesthetic. I know a lot of people won't because it looks so messy, but like all the portraits and stuff on the walls are absolutely gorgeous. Ooh, it's open. Gorgeous. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. 20,000 leaves under the sea. Ooh, okay. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. Oh, sorry. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. But I had no idea what was behind that door. Just like I had no idea where all this was going to lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. That is so cute. Oh. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. My Halloween candy was all gone. Mom, can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. Why you lock my door, man? The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. I ate a lot of things that night. I kept eating and eating. Oh, wow. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. Suddenly, I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Mom and Dad didn't even look at me.
I jumped and I almost got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. This is really cool. him up and I didn't chew one bit. <laughs> then I flew off to find something bigger. A mama rabbit. Was too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. I mean, it's kind of Suddenly, disturbing. <laughs> I was a shark. off a cliff and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. I wanted fat, juicy seals. In my eyes, everything had changed. Now I was a monster, and I smelled people everywhere. Still hungry. 
And across the water, I smelt something new. Something I had to have. So I swam towards it. I slithered onto the sand, and the good smell went into an old pipe. I got closer and closer. It is my room. All of my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know. The creative writing is fantastic. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. Okay. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. Her room was like a museum. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse, his wife Ingeborg and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house hoping to leave the curse behind. <laughs> you some effect up the whole house. <laughs> but 40 foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Mm. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. Old 1937. When Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She that's could have, what, but she didn't. That, that's what was outside. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. Oh. Oh, wow. Like, I knew it was pink. I just didn't know it was this pink. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife, Kay, left on the house was the pink bathroom. 
It was a pretty big trace. Yeah. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. That is so cool. <sighs> Sven gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. Alrighty guys, we're gonna leave this episode off here. This is a really interesting like way to tell a story. We can go back. It's, it's all the creaking and the, the wooden floorboards and everything making noise. It's like setting me on edge here. It's, it's got that creepy atmosphere to it. But it is gorgeous. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, please consider liking and subscribing. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!